Hi there, my name is Magnus Bilgren. I run a company called Tolpagoni Product Management here in Sweden. And I am proud to, this week I've had a fantastic week. I've been working together with Rich Murana from Silicon Valley. And we've been doing numerous workshops with customers, discussing product management, how to develop product management. And it's, it's great. It's been to have very you here. exciting and, and meeting a lot of new people here in Stockholm. And there's a tremendous tech community here that's been wonderful to meet. Wonderful. You know, one situation that we've encountered and, I, and you've encountered throughout the years is that we have a, this company and we have our product, but we also have customers. Don't you love them? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we, and we have the customers coming in and telling us, we'd like you to develop this feature for us. Right. And it's not on the roadmap, and, and there's not, no plan to do it. Absolutely, right. and it's not even in that direction, but it's a lot of money. How do we think in this situation? How do you handle this situation? Because the money is on the table. Right, and I think uh, you know it, it pulls us back to some principles of product management and some basic product strategy or company strategy, where we're going to have to decide whether we're going to divert major effort to do something that's a one-time improvement for a customer that's not representative of our general market. So if they're really big customer and it's a lot of money, we may in fact go ahead and do that, but we need to know that we're going to be sacrificing things off our main roadmap, our main plan, right. our, our product trajectory to do that. So we don't want to do that lightly. Uh, and often I think we find that uh, if you sit down with that customer and you walk them through your actual plan. So here's what we're doing over the next two years, which we think are really important things that you're going to need, and get some buy-in from the customer that those matter. Sometimes this special request falls away because you're left with the or choice that says, okay, Mr. Customer, we can delay the things I've just laid out for you, which I know you need for this one special feature that's going to delay this, in fact, for all of our customers, uh, is it still something you want? Right. And, and but then you really do need like, to have the direction, you need the strategy, you need the roadmap in order to have that discussion. Absolutely. And I think if you don't have a roadmap, then your customers lead you on somewhat of a random walk where right. the ones who come in and seem like good customers or big prospects lead you from one feature to the next, and they're not coherent. They don't form up into a, a sensible whole product that puts you in good stead over time. I mean, right. you, you end up with um, you know an odd-looking product with features that stick out in all directions, and no one wants it. Yeah, customer-driven development has the advantages, of course, but right. it does have some issues. With it, it does. I think you, you need to take customer development and put it through a filter of reasonability and strategy, and market acceptance so that you're letting your customers drive you in the direction that makes sense. Right. right? Uh, that you're not taking outlier customers with odd and bizarre requests mm -hmm. uh, to take you off your path. I think it's great to have customers help you reorder your backlog so that you're getting value out to them as quickly as possible. Maybe some things in your backlog are either not as important or not important at all. Right. Um, and so shifting things that you intend to do to change their order, to change their sequence or timing is really very valuable, mm -hmm. especially if it wins you market share or it wins you the loyalty of major customers. Of course, yeah. But you know, one, th one situation that we also often approach and what they see is that we enter a company and we, when we, we look at their uh, requirements. It could be a backlog or whatever we could sure. call it for a hardware company. There's a lot of requirements, more or less structured. And we want to take it from there to a handover to development. Right. And that's a journey. And sometimes I feel, I feel that this, this journey is taken too lightweight because here we really decide the future of the company. Right. And, 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 that, and that there's, there's a lot of um, relationship between those pieces. So often we've taken a major initiative right. and broken it down into 10 or 20 or 60 requirements. And if we only fulfill 35 of those, we miss our goals, we deliver partial solutions. And so it's important to retain a sense of overall sort of product integrity, product level strategy, so that we know that uh, a major feature or a major benefit or a major improvement is more important than the others. And we keep all the pieces of that together 
if you broke it into a backlog, you're going to push the sub items for that major feature back up to the top of the backlog. All right. Um, not that a software program is ever late or delivery is ever missed, <laughs> um, but if you've been working top down, so that the most important pieces are at the top of your backlog and you're knocking them right. out, uh, when it turns out that you're late, the things that are left are by definition less important. Right. And particularly if you've managed to keep all of the constituent pieces together for that major feature, you may have that done long before your release comes along. Right. And everything after that is valuable, but less important. So you can cut that release where you need to. Right, so what you're saying here is that when looking at product planning is that to be able, we should, it's great to have the customers coming with feedback, but we need to make conscious decisions. Right. Um, we, we can't where be, we're right, going. we can't be the sailboat without the rudder. Right. It's no, blown it's back and forth, uh, particularly since many of those customers either don't really want what they're asking for or aren't willing to pay extra money for what they're asking for right. or will have their situation change. As we get blown from idea to idea, if we don't have a strategy as our rudder, uh, then we're just, we wander. And, right. and we end up with lots of things that get built, but not as many that get sold. <laughs> you know, Rich, this is one area that we at Top Gun really love to work with the product planning process because this is where the strategy meets the reality. Yes. This is really where we make the choices of what product to enter the market and develop and release right. into the market. And, and I see so many technical organizations where the, the engineering function is disconnected from strategy and there's lots of strategy and there's lots of development but that middle ground, the next three or four quarters of hard decisions don't get made. Right. And, that, and that leads to all kinds of really bad results. Right. Okay, Rich. I think that the importance of product planning is kind of clear to all of us. And, but we need to increase that awareness of the importance of that specific process. Right. We need to highlight the fact that a lot of companies aren't doing enough product planning, maybe because they don't see where it fits in the process. Right. Okay, Rich, thank Good. you. Good. Thanks very much. <laughs>